might even do a couple of uh, sprint intervals. I'm like, we stink. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. This week's video is a bit of a long one, but it is a video that I've been wanting to make for you guys for so long. If you follow me on Instagram or you've been watching my vlogs regularly, you would know that I have been on a bit of a journey getting back into running postpartum and I've set myself a little goal to compete in a 25 kilometer event, which is happening in about four weeks from now. So super soon and I've been training for the past three months so I've been documenting it and I've been wanting to create this video for you guys for a while so it's a bit of a long one but I basically share with you my week of training sort of like what my routine looks like and some of the things that I am doing for recovery as well some of the things I use some of my recommendations and then I also filmed a Q&A did a question box on my Instagram, got the most common questions, did a QA and a to answer all your questions and that is at the end of this video. And if you guys watch the video and still have any questions, feel free to comment them down below and I'll get back to you. And if you are enjoying my content, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Okay, so I am going on my first run of the week and firstly, I recently invested in some new socks. So these are like a crew length by this brand, Features. And I got them from a running shop, but they are meant to make a huge difference if you're someone who's prone to blisters uh, because the way they snugly fit. Normal cotton socks will hold a lot of moisture, so then all that moisture with the shoe friction creates blisters. So they, yeah, these are nice long ones, and I think they work because lately my blister situation has been much better. Anyway, that was the first thing I wanted to say. But yeah, I'm going for my first run of the week. My last run was last Friday and it was my long run. It's now Tuesday, so it has been about four days. So I'm ready for a run. I wanna do something short. It's a rainy week, so I've caught a break. Looks like it's clear out there. And I'm wearing my Joe Keanos, which I always wear, and I actually think I need to size down in them. So I'm gonna try I get a seven and a half and I'm usually a seven. So I'm gonna try a seven next because I think that might be why I get a bit of heat friction in the ball of my feet when I run. So anyway, I'm going to go for a short run. I wanna do five kilometers. Firstly, I'm gonna do a one kilometer warm up. So I'm just gonna run one kilometer nice and slow. Then I'm gonna start my app, my Nike run app and on my watch. And I'm gonna do a, not a time trial, but just like a fast pace 5k run and then a one kilometer cool down on the way back and yeah just basically push myself to run a fast pace but just not too far um, to work on speed training so one of the things that I think is like key to a good running plan to I guess improve your speed and your endurance is just like mixing it up and doing lots of different stuff so doing some slow stuff some interval stuff some fast stuff and yeah just like mixing up your routine so yeah first run of the week it's 4 p.m and i'm gonna do a quick five i'm usually wearing a running belt but today i'm not gonna wear it because i'm not gonna bring my phone i'm just gonna get out there and do this and i'll report back with how I go when i'm done So I did a one kilometer warm up at like five minutes 30. And then I said I was gonna do a 5K, come here, come on. Oh, So I was going to do five kilometer speed work, but. I don't understand, so I was going to do five kilometers. Siri, not now. So I think I gave it pretty much my all because I did have a bit of a mum moment and wear my pants a little bit. Anyway, I did four kilometers. Oh, it's hot. Is that for my ear? Oh, wow. Like that? Oh, thank you. 
Yeah. So four kilometers, average 405, yeah. and time 16 minutes, 24 seconds, heart rate, 185 which is very high so yeah every kilometer was about 405 which is fast and i could never hold that for much longer i don't think but yeah really happy with that i'm extremely sweaty as you can see so it only took me about like 25 minutes total oh what are you doing what <laughs> i can see another bumped head coming here Pretty happy with that, that's my speed work, and I'll probably do a bit of a cool down now, stretch, drink lots of water, and that's it. Have a shower, because I am very sweaty. And play with Bowie. So it is now Thursday afternoon. We've had a really rainy week here, so I haven't been able to get out for any morning runs, because I've just been waiting for the weather to clear. It's actually like sunny blue skies right now. So I'm going to head out for my second run of the week and for this run I'm going to go a little bit longer but a little bit slower. So as you would have seen the last run was like a speed work. I did four kilometers and it was like fast pace for. So today I'm going to slow it back but go a bit further. I'm going to go for a 10k jog. I'm going to pop a podcast in my ear and I'm just going to jog up to the end of my suburb and back and I might even do a couple of sprint intervals towards the end maybe just to mix it up a little bit I'm going to run with my phone so I can maybe take some videos on the way this is my video recommendation of the week um, if you are into running Lululemon have these great belts waist belts and yeah they just make it really easy and comfortable to carry your phone with you so it just clips on the back and then we have this pocket here and it's really stretchy so it looks really small but it's stretchy so your phone can squeeze in it there is also a little clip i just discovered and you can also clip your i assume that would be for your car keys or something and put them into this little pocket anyway it's really handy except my phone is the huge iphone so it's a bit bulky so i go caseless in the pocket so it's just easier to flip in and out when i'm taking a video or if i'm making a call so of course the other thing that i'm going to show you guys tomorrow i'm heading for a strength class so i'll vlog that for you guys because i like to include strength training in my weekly workout routine it doesn't always happen but it's something i'm trying to do because it's important to strengthen up these muscles and these muscles as well as these muscles which will help to support your joints when you're running anyway while the sun is shining i'm gonna head out for my 10 kilometer run <laughs> see ya one and a half k's in and yeah my shins are quite sore which is, is not unusual for me I guess I have got shin splints pretty much <laughs> my whole like running life I feel um but it fluctuates right now I feel like they're not great which I think says to me that I probably need to do more stretching and more strength work because I have I was really good with it my knee was sore and yeah I've been really bad with it lately so that is my turnaround point 5k's and yeah I'm really tight in my shin so I'm still just like trying to track at a slower pace usually as I warm up the pain like tenderness goes away and yeah half an hour in pretty much and it's still there so I'm gonna keep running a different loop home and hopefully it feels better shortly otherwise yeah I think I might have to ice rest and stretch hello I'm icing the gate yes 
Dad's icing the cake! Whee! <laughs> Alright. Workout completed. Time, 53 huh? minutes, 59 seconds. Distance, 10.01 kilometers. There we go. Average pace, 523 per kilometer. Oh my god, I'm like bending my... I'll put the screenshot of the run up on the screen, same with the last run. 523. <laughs> Heart rate... 156 so compared to yesterday's 185 heart rate that was obviously a much slower pace to run but I think I needed it because my this part of my leg my shins are quite sore and I'm probably gonna go put them in the pool because the pool water is icy cold fastest kilometer was the little last one 505 chasing me I've seen Alex and Bowie and Oat and I chased them so, Is that fast, Bowie? <laughs> so I need to have lots of water. I need to stretch and maybe foam roll and ice my heart. Oh! Oh! Boo boo! <laughs> boo boo! <laughs> 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 Tada, mummy. Tada, mummy. Bowie. Ta. <laughs> Can mummy have it? Oh, 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 oh. I need to use it for my legs, but. Hello. Did you make any friends? So it is Friday morning and Fridays I usually like to do some kind of strengthening workout. So typically I aim to go to a Pilates class every week and that would be my Friday workout, going to Pilates to strengthen my muscles, um, doing a lot of body weight exercises. I don't always make it to Pilates though, it's like my pinnacle goal, I don't always get there. Uh, but today I'm actually doing something different and exciting, I'm going along to Strong Burley's opening class their media event so if you've been watching my channel for a while I'm trying to think how long maybe a year ago I went to a strong class up in Hope Island with my friend Haley. I think we even went back a second time I might have logged that as well but it's basically a mix of rowing and reformer Pilates on the one machine it's so hard so good for your body makes you feel so great it's a short class and I really loved it and I'm so excited because they just opened up their Burley studio and yeah we're gonna go ahead and check that out this morning so that will be my strength workout for this week and I'm going to pick up my friend Haley dragging her along with me even though she didn't want to get out of bed this morning gotta love that Hard. Obviously, as you could on. see, I can't. It makes no sound. You gotta sweat it out for a second. What? I'm like we steam. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you would have seen it was a mix of uh, reformer Pilates strength stuff with. What was the other thing? Roller. Roller. I suck at rowing, and I really want to work on that because I 
<laughs> I just have bad form. I feel form, like it's don't the I? technique. It's the technique. I'm like, I'm trying all these different things to it. I'm, I'm like, like, I just can't. It's, I, I'm looking it's at not your face me. and you're like, so concentrating. Like, I'm trying so, so hard. And I'm just. Your face just looks like. I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this. <laughs> and you're like going so Fuck. hard. I'm like still defeated not every time. Anyway, it's lots of fun, and I think they have lots of studios opening up across Australia, which is really cool. So fun, love it. Anyway, we're gonna go meet the boys and the baby for coffee. Yay! Yay. So it is currently Sunday morning, and that means it's the last day of the week. And oh. every week, because we're training for a 25-kilometer event. Every week since we started training a few months ago, we've just been adding on one to two kilometers to our distance and going for one long run each week. So at the moment I've been adding on two kilometers every fortnight because here's the thing, I was running every run, trying to run as fast as I could, like my like max pace, pushing myself. However, I got a knee injury and I believe it was because I was pushing my pace too hard, putting too much strain on these muscles and didn't have enough strength through them. So now I do a bit of a combination of slower pace running and faster pace running. And when it comes to long runs, I go for a long distance run one Sunday or one week. And I try to go slow and just get the kilometers done and just like purposefully slow myself down and just like take it a bit easy. And then the following week, I do the same kilometers, but I try to do it faster. So like, not like full race pace, but trying to like actually like push myself to the point where I'm like hurting. So this week is a slow one. So I'm going for 20 Ks today and I'm just having some caffeine before I go. Cause I just feel like I always need that. I'm just having like a little shot though with like a dash of almond milk. Uh, I'm also going to take a gel. Oh, they grab all this stuff. Okay, so things I'm packing. I've got my waist belt which I'm going to wear over the top of my shirt and in that I'm packing a gel just one so last week I had two of these I had one at about the nine kilometer point and another one around the 14 kilometer point this time I'm just going to try taking it when I get to like 15 kilometers and see if it just gives me like a boost for the last five because I feel like I want to use these on the day so I'm just trialing some different ones and trialing different timings and seeing what I think. So I'm gonna pop that in here. Bowie. I will be taking my phone because it is a long distance. And I might take some little clips as I'm running for the view. Yeah. Headphone always, which I don't take my case with me. And I actually only put one headphone in because my other ear doesn't fit a headphone. It was just formed that way in the womb. They think my sis had her foot tucked up into my ear and that's why it's like that. So anyway, as a consequence, I can't wear headphones in this ear. So I just wear one, which kind of works for me because then I can listen to my music and I can also hear the surroundings. So I can hear if bikes coming, people coming, cars, etc. And a cap, of course. I've already put sunscreen on my face because we don't want to get burnt. So I'm gonna be out there for like an hour and a half to two hours. In terms of like pre-run nutrition, normally I don't eat in the mornings. Last night I had pizza, so it was like pretty carb heavy. And normally before a run I don't eat, but I feel like I'm gonna start trying to get into the habit before these longer runs of having like a snack. Maybe like a banana or like a few spoonfuls of oats, which reminds me. Yeah, so I don't have any bananas, so I'm gonna have a made Bowie this bursha actually. I made two, so I'm not stealing his breakfast. Um, and I'm just gonna have one of these because it'll be like a small, but like energy dense little snack. Cheers. Also that workout I went to on Friday, I'm so sore in all these strange places through my arms, sides and abs and my bum actually. But yeah, wow, such a good workout and something like so different. Hey, Yogi. What you doing? You had so much fun yesterday. It's women chasing the ball, chasing the doggies, eating the food. And I always make sure my watch is fully charged before this kind of run. And I use this app here. 
keep it on the home screen right next to Spotify because they're the two apps that I use. All right, I'm gonna head out for my big 20K run. Fingers crossed I'm feeling good. Conditions look superb, so couldn't ask for a better weather to be honest. And yeah, I'll try film some little clips as I go. Let's go. So good. Pace is 508 average, which is actually a lot faster than I anticipated, but feeling pretty good. And I'm just gonna see how the next 10Ks feel um, to get home. Because I'm actually feeling really good. I'm gonna have a drink and then keep running. I don't like to stop for too long because I want my legs to cool down. So yeah. The last kilometer was my fastest by far. <sighs> I really pushed myself. 4.29 on that 20th K. Oh, wow. It's crazy. Oh, it just shows that like, I paced the first bit, so I still had some like energy left in me. I also had that gel like five Ks ago. So maybe that helped. But yeah, super happy with that. Yeah, so usually, I feel like in those last couple of k's I'm honestly gonna die and like I can't run so I'm really happy with that ah, now I'm gonna go meet Alex and Bowie at the beach probably go for a swim in my active wear and get a huge huge breakfast hello it's my little beach boy oh, come ba, ba. go mum go mum go mum woo hoo high five Whoa. high five Come on, does mommy get a high five? Oh, I love you. This is the best way to finish around. I got it. Mm. Oh. Making a mistake, Bowie. Oops. This isn't fully frozen. It's a shell of an ice cube. I don't like it. So, home from the beach. I'm having a coconut water. I was gonna have breakfast straight away because usually I'd like to eat after a run pretty soon after. It's probably been an hour now um, and I'm starting to get really hungry because I only had an iced coffee because the place we went was sold out of pretty much everything. I'm having a coconut water now and we're about to head out for breakfast so I'll have like something big and delicious because I'm so hungry. But I'm going to have a little bit of coconut water. This is the one I love, non-spawn and I actually used to hate this. Alex used to drink these all the time and I'd have a sip and be like, oh, not for me, but it's growing on me. I'm starting to really enjoy it. Oh, what are you doing, Jiggy boy? Uh-oh. Do you want to come down off the couch and come around here? All right. Do you want some coconut water? <laughs> That's what I thought about it at first too, but it really did grow on me. It's by far the best coconut water on the market. No. Apart from no. the real coconuts. You want to no. no. Anyway, when we get home from Brecky and put him down for his no. nap, I'm going to do some recovery for my legs because they're going to start to get sore. And yeah, I'll show you what I do for like recovery after a long run. And yeah, let's go get some food. Mummy's getting so hungry. <laughs> So now we're home from brunch and I'm going to do some recovery. Alex bought one of these probably a couple of months ago and so basically it gets him out of giving me massages after my runs. No, but seriously, these things are pretty good, hey? I don't know scientifically if they work, but they feel good. And yeah, that's kind of what I like to do on my recovery afternoon. See, the thing with 
training for this long distance and doing these long runs is like on that long run day for the rest of the afternoon you're pretty cooked like I feel like you use so much energy and endorphins that by the end of the day you're pretty much like crashed so like for sure after this event I'm definitely not going to be running these distances weekly I'm going to keep running I'm going to set myself a new goal but yeah I just feel like Running those long distances is great and feels so good, but it just pretty much like cooks me for a whole day. And yeah, I just don't want to feel cooked on a Sunday. So I'm going to do some recovery with this. I'll probably do some more stretching as well. And I'll probably do this while I watch some Netflix. So the next part of this video, I wanted to answer some common questions. I put a Q&A up on my Instagram story a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, I just wanted to basically answer the most asked questions because I've been sharing a lot of my, I guess, return to running postpartum on my Instagram stories and a lot of my journey to training for this 25 kilometer event. And honestly, every time I share my runs, I get the same questions. I've done a couple of cute like I've done a couple of small Q&As on my Instagram. But yeah, I thought I'd just take the opportunity at the end of this video to address some questions because I think it'll answer some of the things that I actually really wanted to say in this video. I've made myself a coffee, a little oat latte. And it is this mug. So first question, how long have you been running and how did you get into it? I've been running basically my whole life. Actually growing up Running was my sport, so growing up like primary school age, I competed in cross country as well as the athletics, basically with just the running events. And so did my twin sister, and we did little athletics after school, and we did running training after school. So it was kind of like my go-to sport. And so I think I've carried that through with me into my adult years of just really enjoying it. Through high school, through the early years of high school, I should say, I basically gave up running because I think in that time of being like 12, 13, going through puberty, I felt as though being sporty, and I think this was probably quite reminiscent of that era, being sporty as a girl wasn't particularly attractive. So at the time I gave up pretty much athletics because I wanted to hit puberty sooner and fit in with all the other girls. But then when I hit year 10, 11 senior years, I got back into running with my sister and my friends and I started doing some training with some girls at school. And yeah, I just found that love and passion for it again. And then I think I've just carried that through with me into my adult years. Since then, I've just done it as like a hobby of a way to keep fit. Done two half marathons and one marathon. And then now I'm training for this 25K event. It's yeah, it's just like my go-to therapy, my go-to thing to go do for not only my body, but my mind. And I just get so much enjoyment out of it. And I hope that some of you who don't think that they can, I hope that some of you can start a running journey and find some enjoyment out of it and get some health and fitness too. What do you find motivates you when you're not feeling it? So often the times when I'm not feeling it is if I wanna go for like an afternoon run cause that's when my motivation just decreases and disappears. So I don't know, sometimes I think it's just getting yourself out the door, that's the hardest part. And once you get going and the endorphins start coming and you start sweating, that's when I start to feel really good and motivated. So I just kind of always remind myself of that and that's how I motivate myself. Just knowing that I'm not gonna come home from that run and feel worse. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna feel really good, really pumped up and just really, I guess, proud that I actually went out and did it. Yeah, I just think you never regret a run or a workout. Advice for someone who can't even run one kilometer and wants to get into running. I think if you think you can't run one kilometer, you can't. This is what I said to one of my friends a few months ago and she said it really stuck with her and she's like and then I went for a run and you're totally right so much of running is in your mind so like 
if you tell yourself that you can't even run a kilometer or I can't do five kilometers or I'll never be able to run 10 kilometers, I think you're just setting up instant barriers within your own mind. And so much of it is just like overcoming that and realizing that you can. So for example, if you're going out running and you're like, oh, I can't even do a kilometer, really like internalize those thoughts and go, can I, like, how are my legs feeling? Are my legs actually really tired? Can they not stop? Can they not keep going? Like really running is one foot in front of the other. And of course, I'm, this is talking in a broad sense. I'm not specifying on people who have injuries or certain conditions where they literally cannot run. I'm talking about just like generally those people who might be sitting here going like, oh my God, I just like, I hate running and I can't even run a kilometre. The thing is, you probably most definitely can. And you just kind of have to yeah, overcome that mental barrier and set out with small goals and you will see improvements relatively quickly, like a couple of weeks. So I guess for someone like that, I would say, you know, set out for the goal to go a kilometer, but break it into some interval training, break it down into small chunks. And then each day or each week, each month, set yourself further goals and expand those distances. And honestly, like you'll see improvement quick and you can run a kilometer. It's all in that mind. It's a bit of a trick. And I think in training, one of the things that I have noticed is if I'm going for a long run and say I set out for the goal, I'm going to do 18 kilometers this week. There's something about hitting that almost home milestone, like around the last two kilometers, where often your body just kind of like, it's like your mind just shuts your body down. So I always have these like, I guess I call it like a mental block where I'm almost there. And then it's like my mind just thinks I can't get, I can't finish or I, I guess it's like my body gives up. And yeah, I just know that I 100% can. I've run 16 kilometers comfortably. I can run those two kilometers, but so much of it's in your mind. And that's why, yeah, you just got to stick with a positive outlook and yeah, really just challenge yourself, challenge your mind and you'll see really great growth. What are your tips for getting faster and how did you get fast? Tips for getting faster, I think in terms of like overall you want to improve your speed would be doing interval training because that's really going to improve like those fast switch fibers. I don't know if I'm using the right terminology here, but doing some interval training is for sure the best thing for improving speed. So that might be, say you want to go for a 5k interval and you want to get your five kilometer pace faster, your time, then go out and do like a kilometer fast, or actually let's go smaller half a kilometer running like as fast as like or as hard as you can 80 to 100 percent and then jog for 500 meters and then do that again and again till you get to the five kilometers so five rounds that is a great way to improve your speed and then in terms of like say you want to be running long distances and you want to improve your speed mix up your training i've been stuck in like a I was in like a training rut where I was doing every run basically like the same pace, but it's actually better and more beneficial to do purposefully, which you would have seen in my workouts for the week and my runs for the week, how I like to mix things up and do different styles of running and training. Mix it up, do some slow pace running, do some fast, faster, shorter runs, do some interval training, do some time trials and really just mix it up and have fun with it. And yeah, over the course of some months, you should see improvement in your pace. And also remembering that a lot of it is a mental thing. And I think, yeah, you might just be thinking that you can't run a faster pace or a goal pace, but you might actually be able to do it sooner than you think. So my memory card just filled up, which means I am definitely rambling too much. And I always do this in Q and A's and I say, I'm not going to do it. So I'm going to try to be a bit more, um, quick to my answers. So how often do I run per week? At the moment, my plan is, and always has been three times a week is my goal. And I have been hitting that every single week because it's a small goal and it's achievable. And I think if you set yourself smaller, more achievable goals, you're more likely to get, more likely to get it done. And then you're gonna stay motivated and stay on track with your goals. So three runs a week, I try to break them up across the week. I try to mix them up with different speeds and distances. And you would have seen that in my week of running training. How do you recover? Again, you would have seen this throughout my video. So doing stuff such as stretching, foam rolling, um, the massage gun. So 
Sometimes it's putting our legs in the cold pool or going for a um, massage. But overall, I also think I have some good recovery and downtime just by the fact that I only run three times a week. How do you warm up slash cool down? So I wasn't doing any warming up or cooling down previously, but then when I had that knee injury and got some professional advice, some of the research says that there is benefit to warming up. Some says there isn't, uh, but I'm just adding warm ups to a lot of my workouts anyway. So you also would have seen in the video, I was doing some jumping just to warm up the muscles that support my knees and my shins. I was doing some stretches to just to get, get some more mobility before I started running. And then if I'm going out for a speed run, I don't go out the door at that pace. I will go for a warm up one kilometer. And so basically I'll just like start my watch when it gets to a kilometer and I'll just like cruise along at like a five and a half, six minute pace. Then once I get to where I want to start the run, one kilometer mark, stop the watch and then restart it for my speed training so that my pace for the speed training is exactly accurate for that run. Then in terms of cool down, I often like to say I want to go for a 10K run. I, rather than turning around at five kilometers, I'll turn around at like 5.2 or 5.5 in order to give myself time to get back and still be 500 meters or a kilometer away from home. And that way, when I get to that point, I can stop my watch and then either do a really slow pace jog home or walk home from there. How do you stay hydrated on a long run? I don't necessarily hydrate during the long run. I mean, occasionally I might stop at a bubbler and have a sip. For hydration, it's more before and after for me. So the night before, just being conscious to drink a bit more water. And I actually don't try to have much water directly before a run because my bladder just would not handle it. So before a long run, I will have like an espresso shot with like a dash of milk so that it's like minimal coffee because I just need to have my coffee before a run. But I try to have it really small because the bladder post baby just ain't the same. But immediately after, I make sure that I hydrate so much through the day. I'm just so thirsty. I usually have, you would have seen, I had a coconut water. So I usually have a big coconut water after a long run. I'll probably have another coffee later in the morning. I will then also throughout the day just have like juices, lots of water. Sometimes I have some like electrolyte tablets in water. And yeah, honestly, I'm just drinking all day after a big run. And honestly, you can tell your hydration status just by the color of your pee. And so you'll know if you're having enough or not. And usually it's a good indication of whether you need to drink more. Favorite podcasts and playlists to listen to when running. So I've got my running playlist, which I've shared on my Instagram a few times now. And there's quite a few of you following it now. Let's have a look. It's a Spotify playlist. So it's called Running. And we've got 4,400 people following my playlist. And I haven't updated it for a little while. But this is my playlist of some upbeat music that I really like listening to. I actually went and created another playlist called 25k run which is pretty much the same playlist i'm just having some issues getting this to play on my watch without my phone just into my headphones other playlists work with no issues but for some reason both of my running playlists and alex is having the same issues if you're a tech whiz and you know spotify and you know what's going on please help us because we're both having issues with any of our running playlists and getting them to play just by wearing our watch and headphone out running. So I often have to take my phone just so I can listen to the music that I want to listen to. So they're my two playlists. In terms of podcasts, I only listen to a podcast if I am like just going for a slow run and I just want to get the kilometers in and want the time to pass. I will often opt for a for a podcast, which I never would have thought I would enjoy listening to podcasts when running. Anyway, I listen to the Shameless podcast. They're my favorite podcast to listen to. I love those girls. They're just like, the content's just such easy listening. It's great escapism. If you're wanting something that's just like, you know, pop culture, bit of a laugh and yeah, easy listen. That's what I listen to. And other than that, I don't listen to anything else really on my runs. What running shoes do you wear? So I wear Asics Gel Keanos. I've been wearing them for a decade. I love these shoes. I just think they work for me and my feet. They're the highest support slash stability shoes in the Asics range. And I need that support for my arch. Hence why I just haven't looked back since converting to those shoes. 
Um, everyone's feet are different though, so definitely go to one of those places to get your feet checked out and scanned and work out which shoes suit you best. Um, but yeah, they're the ones that I use. And also you should have different shoes for running than you have for walking and training. So I have my like, I basically just use my old joggers as my walking shoes or I have some like other kind of sneakers that are not suitable for running. But then for running, I specifically have my shoes for that and I'll wear them for about six months. And because I'm doing long distances, probably every six months I need to be buying some new ones because I am wearing down the soles of those. And yeah, then once I get to the end of those, I pretty much just put them into my walking pile and use them just for strolls. What products do you recommend for running, like belts, activewear, etc.? So I uh, run basically always in Amen, and you probably would have seen that in a lot of these stories. I love their seamless activewear. Their bike shorts, especially, are just so comfortable. They come down lower on the thigh, they don't ride up. They don't ride down, they're just like, yeah, love them. I also really love their sports bras, but honestly, I like most sports bras because they don't require a lot of support. They have a supportive range of sports bras as well, like extra support. They are so comfortable and I just love wearing those. I also usually wear a baggy tee over the top, just my personal preference, and gives me a bit of sun protection and yeah, I'm probably going to get this horrible t-shirt tan from wearing tees. But I also wear a running belt. I think I described this earlier in the video and showed you guys, but I wear a Lululemon running belt. Love that thing as well. And in terms of socks, I think I also showed you guys the socks that I invested in recently. They are working like a charm because I haven't had any problems with blisters anymore. I have my AirPods. I have my watch. They're like, I feel like they're pretty essential for me. I couldn't run without them anymore and oh and I also always wear a cap or sunglasses but mostly a cap because I find sunglasses kind of uncomfortable when I'm running whereas a cap is giving you some protection on your face as well as like shadowing your eyes so that's just my go-to running goals for 2022 that's a good one because this year's goal has been training up for that 25 kilometer event if you're not familiar with the event or what I'm talking about, basically three or four months ago, Alex and I were like, we need to get some motivation. We need something to train for, something to focus on. And our friends told us about this event on the Gold Coast called the GC50. So it's a 50K Ultra. They also have a 25K event and a 12.5K event. The 50K Ultra, too much. And the 12.5K just seemed too easy for us considering we'd done a couple of half marathons. So we went for the 25k event and that's what we're currently training for. It's happening at the end of November. It's going to be hot, but we are running at 5.30 in the morning, I think it is. So it'll be pretty early for us, but I am pretty worried about that temperature. And basically we just want to get it done and we both just want to like have a good run and feel really good. But there is this also underlying sense of competitiveness that's going on here. The next question on the list, which Amanda, my assistant, shortlisted these from my stories for you guys, is will you beat your husband in the 25K? Now, I am not assuming he wrote this, but I'm pretty sure he would have wrote this because his goal is to beat me in this event, which just puts stress on me. But I'm an Aries and Aries are typically very stubborn and very competitive. So I, of course, am gonna have to beat him. So yes, in answer to the last question, I'm gonna beat him. <laughs> and well, we'll see. Stay tuned, I'll let you guys know how that pans out. Um, but both of us really just wanna finish it gracefully. And yeah, I think just us wanting to beat each other is just like a fun little challenge. But I really like, honestly, on the day when I'm running, I just don't wanna see him because Every day's like, you can just have such different days. Some days you're just feeling great and it just feels like you're running so smoothly, you're gliding and it's just, everything feels good and right. Different weather conditions, like I really hope it's not windy and I hope it's sunny, but not too hot. Um, but then you can just have those crap days where like things are aching, you just feel sloppy and slow and yeah, I really just hope it's not one of those days. And I think seeing him and if I see him like overtake me, I feel like that may like, make the run harder. I'm excited to 
race him, but I don't want to race him, if that makes sense. Back to the running goals for 2022, which was the last question, which I never answered because I went off on tangent. I think my next goal isn't going to be distance. I think I'm going to bring it back and set myself a goal for next year. I really want to work on a fast 10 kilometer pace. So I want to train shorter distances and improve my pace. And I'm going to say my goal, I don't, I don't know if I'll ever be able to do it. It just seems so out of reach, but hey, I'm going to put it on the table. I've always wanted to run 10 kilometers in under 40 minutes. That is four minute splits for 10 kilometers. I'll just leave it there and we will see one day if I can get there. Anyway, thank you for tuning in on today's video. I hope that the Q&A answered some questions. If I didn't, ask them below. Anything specifically related to injuries, things like that, don't ask. I'm not an expert, I don't know, and I don't wanna give advice that I'm not qualified to give. But if you have any other general questions below from this video, ask them down below and I'll get back to you guys. And as always, thanks for watching my videos and I'll see you guys next week's one.